Andrea Tonet. Thank you very much, Annie, and good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. As Viviani was saying, my name is Andrea Tonet. I'm part of the global marketing department here in CRC, and I was lucky enough to be part of the team who actually designed and developed our brand new work crews for 2019, on which I will tell you something more in today's webinar. As you know, the work crew is one of the most uh, representative and iconic products of CRC probably because it incorporates and it encompasses some of the core values of our vision of luxury travel. First of all, the love for destination. Love for destination means a variety of destinations. You know that CRC cover every year over 800 destinations across the, the globe, and this will be very much reflected in our work crews itinerary as well. But it's beyond the variety of destinations. It's also the extra care that we put in choosing the destination, selecting the right destination for our uh, guests, and offering destinations that others cannot offer many times because, and thanks to the intimate size of our beautiful ships, and you will see that this is very much the case also for the World Cruise 2019. And there is then a third aspect to this, which is the unique experiences and the unique stories that we are able to tell you, to tell our guests about the destinations that we visit. And this is uh, this point is central to the concept of the 2019 World Cruise, and it's not a coincidence that uh, the name that we give her is the Tale of Tales. And as a matter of fact, in 2019, our World Cruise guests will be honored by the presence on board of nine different world-renowned authors, novelists, artists, which will be tasked to write a story about their journey, about their experience with, with Silver Sea during this uh, world cruise. And this will be very much of an interactive uh, experience because these uh, uh, incredible authors will be giving lectures to our guests, will be telling them stories about this nation that we will be visiting. We will intro we they will be introducing our guests to hidden secrets about these destinations to uh, angles and stories that they've never heard before and they can only tell those stories because they are one of the most travel, well-traveled people in, uh, in the world. But not only they will be giving lectures, they will interact with, with our guests, but they will also take inspiration from the conversations that they will have with our officials, with our crew, with our guests. So we can say that the anthology that we'll put together at the end of the World Cruise, this unique artwork will be the, the result of a collaborative work in which each and every guest will be a co-author. And just to give you a couple of names, we are very proud to announce the presence on board of the first two authors, which are Paul Teru and Pico Iyer. I don't think they need much introduction. I'm pretty sure that most of you are familiar with these two incredible professionals. Paul Theroux is uh, one of the most acclaimed uh, travel writers in the world. He's written some uh, bestsellers like uh, The Great Railway Bazaar and other books which have also been then uh, uh, transformed into, into movies. One of these is Dark Star Safari and interestingly interestingly enough, this book tells a story of a voyage between uh, Cairo and uh, Cape Town and it's basically an exploration of Africa. And you will see that Africa is central and is one of the main highlights of our work cruise for 2019. On the right hand side, we have a Pico Ayer. Pico Ayer that on top of being considered one of the best travel writers uh, alive, to, for some is uh, the most important living travel uh, writer. He has been uh, teaching in some of the most prestigious universities in the world, including Harvard and Princeton and he has been writing for Time magazine since 1982. So you can just imagine what uh, an experience, what an added value it can represent to travel along these people, to have them as your fellow passengers and to hear stories from them while you're sailing uh, around the world. But let's go now and have a look at the itinerary. I know that you're all very much looking forward to it. And you will agree with me that just by looking at this map, the itinerary looks stunning because it's so extensive, so comprehensive. In just over 130 days, we will be visiting five different continents, 
sailing three different oceans and visiting 52 ports in more than 30 different uh, countries. Uh, the ones among you that are already making travel arrangements have probably noticed how convenient departure and arrival ports are with uh, San Francisco as the departing port, of course a, a domestic departure from the uh, west coast of the US and arrival in London in the UK, meaning just one flight away from the, man, the main international airports in the US and in the rest of the world. World Cruise once again will be sailed on board the beloved Silver, Silver Whisper, which uh, has all the hallmarks of the Silver Sea uh, experience. So a limited size, there's less than uh, uh, 400 passengers, multiple dining venues, all suite accommodation, mostly with a private balcony, and of course the uh, bespoke personalized service for which Silver Sea is renowned. The departure is set for January 6, 2019. So let's go now and have a look in more detail at the different segments which compose this uh, itinerary, or to better say, to the different chapters which compose this story that we will be uh, writing all together. The first leg will take us from California all the way down to uh, South Pacific. And the South Pacific program is quite intense and quite impressive in this world cruise. We will be staying uh, more or less one week in French Polynesia, visiting some of the most beautiful islands in, um, in the region. Of course, plenty of time to relax, to dive, to swim, to snorkel, but also to immerse yourself into the Tahitian culture. And the Tahitian culture will be at the center of our first World Cruise event. We will have four exclusive World Cruise events, which means uh, complementary events which are reserved to our full World Cruise uh, passengers. The first of these events will be in Papete, and we will involve the local um, population, we will involve local musicians, performers, and in local storytellers, which will tell us uh, uh, stories and uh, tales about the legends of this uh, region in an incredible uh, surrounding as only the French Poly Polynesia can be. It will be definitely a great night and a great experience for our, for our guests to open this incredible itinerary. After Papete, our voyage will continue a couple of more islands in the region, including Rarotonga in uh, the Cook Islands, just before getting to Auckland, New Zealand, and then Sydney, Australia, where we will be staying uh, overnight. We know how much our World Cruise guests love Australia and New Zealand, because we all know how beautiful this part of the world is, but at the same time, how far away it is, so it's kind of complicated sometimes to get there. And you can only imagine how convenient it is to get there in the comfort of a silver sea ship, not even having to pack and unpack your luggage after your departure from, uh, from the US. So as I said, Oakland, Sydney overnight, and then the voyage continues along the Golden Coast up to Brisbane and then uh, Cairns. Cairns, of course, is the gateway to the Great Coral Reef, probably the most famous and the most beautiful coral reef in, uh, in the world. Then after Cairns, we will continue up north and we will get to Java, southern Indonesia, where we'll be probably encountering what the experts consider like the uh, last dinosaurs still alive in the world, which are of course the, uh, the Komodo dragons. And after that, after Komodo Island, we will be moving to Benoa, which means of course uh, Bali. Bali with its uh, amazing scenery, landscape, the rice terraces, the incredible cultural diversity for which it has become a, a, a top destination, one of the biggest hits in the, last, uh, in the last 10 years. And Bali is also the starting point of our impressive Asian collection in this World Cruise. We've never had such a, a rich uh, Asian program in a World Cruise uh, itinerary and we'll kick it off with the Philippines. The Philippines are at the very top of any ranking for web concerns luxury travel destination nowadays. Silver Sea has been sailing in the Philippines since many years because we've understood before anybody else the potential and the beauty of this archipelago because in the end, in the, end the Philippines are an archipelago of thousands of beautiful islands and we'll be visiting some of these islands in this World Cruise as you can see from this, from this map, including Manila, 
Manila, which is of course the capital of the Philippines, where we'll be enjoying the warm welcome of the local population. You know, by the way, that uh, a vast part of our crew members are uh, from the Philippines, so it will be a great moment and an emotional moment of sharing for the entire ship once we get to the Philippines, particularly when we get to the capital, uh, Manila. After that, this segment, as you can see from the map, will be concluded in Japan. And Japan is the number one um, highlight of this itinerary, of these work crews. We really fought hard to include, uh, to include Japan in this itinerary. It's the first time ever the Silver Sea offers Japan as part of a war cruise itinerary. And we really wanted it in, a, in this itinerary because not only we are aware of the uh, beauty of this country in any aspect, being it uh, its culture, its history, the lifestyle, the technological evolution rather than the cuisine, but also because we heard this loud and clear from our guests, from the continuous conversation that we are having with our passport cruisers, with our guests on other ships, they tell us that Japan is a great destination and they would like to have it featured in our top product, which is the, the World Cruise. And therefore, Japan will be part of this World Cruise, and not only will be part, we will have a special event in Japan, which is something more than a special event, will actually be a, a three-night overland program starting from Osaka. We will be visiting some of the most important cities of Japan, some of the most important UNESCO heritage sites in Japan, including, for instance, the Golden Pavilion in uh, Kyoto, which is another beautiful city on top of uh, Osaka and Tokyo. Our guests will be rejoining the ship in Tokyo after three days, and they will be doing so traveling on a bullet train from Kyoto to, to Tokyo. After Japan, the journey in Asia will continue, and uh, we continue with China. We'll have a double overnight in uh, Shanghai, so plenty of time for our guests to explore not only the city itself, but also the surrounding area and some of the uh, of the cities nearby, which have a very important heritage, cities like Anzu, Suzu, or or Nanjing. After that, we'll continue along the coast, Hong Kong, with an overnight in uh, Hong Kong. We know that uh, it's one of the most beloved destinations in our destination portfolio in general. After that, Ho Chi Minh, of course, a former Saigon, overnight here as well, because we want to allow uh, all the necessary time to visit the, the city, but also to explore the controversial past of all the surrounding area. For instance, the Kochi tunnels are one of the, of the highlights of this, um, of this region, and they allow you to really get a proper uh, grasp of what the Vietnam War from a Vietnamese, Vietnamese perspective. After that, we will get to Singapore, and this will be the end of this, um, of this segment, and will be to some extent also the end of our Asian chapter for this World Cruise. But in closing this chapter, we will open a new one, which is even more unusual, and for this even more fascinating, which is the Indian Ocean and African chapter of this World Cruise. In the Indian Ocean, in the Indian Ocean we will be visiting some of the most beautiful islands and some of the most beautiful coasts on the western, uh, on the eastern, sorry, coast of, of Africa. We will start with uh, Sri Lanka, Trincomalee, and the capital uh, Colombo. Then, of course, Maldives, Seychelles with Praslin and Mae, just before getting to the African coast, and Mombasa. Mombasa, Kenya, of course, is uh, uh, wildlife, wildlife, and once again, wildlife. It's considered the world's capital for uh, wildlife and safari, and that's why we will be staying there overnight to allow plenty of time for exploration. After Mombasa, the voyage continues with uh, uh, Tanzania, Zanzibar. Zanzibar is one of the most fascinating uh, cities in, um, in Africa, also due to the many dominations that have alternated over time with the French and Portuguese, and this is very much visible in the old uh, stone town and its spice market, which is one of the most uh, captivating markets in, uh, in the world. After that, we'll move to Mamuzu in my yacht, and then Madagascar. Let me spend a couple of words on Madagascar because it's one of the most incredible places on Earth. If you consider that 80%, four out of five of the species, being it flora or fauna, that you can find in Madagascar can be found only in Madagascar, that's an incredible indication of how special and how unique this country and this island are. 
After that, we will be slowly moving down towards uh, South Africa, but before getting to South Africa, we will stop in Maputo, Maputo, which is the Art Deco uh, capital of Mozambique, and Mozambique is another emerging destination. You will see in few years' time that we will be at the top of all the, uh, the travel ranking for what concerns luxury destination, and once again, Silver Sea has been saving them for quite a while, and we will be taking there also on the World Cruise itinerary. And after that, we will finally get to, to South Africa. Our South African program is quite intense and quite extensive because there are so many sites to this, uh, to this country. First of all, the, the wildlife. We were mentioning before the wildlife in, uh, in Kenya, of course, Mombasa, Mombasa is famous for safari and wildlife. But South Africa, believe me, is second to none, at least for what concerns the variety of species that you can see there. If you imagine that, thanks to its um, peculiar position on the map, you have the widest array of animals in the world. You can go from the lions to the penguins on the southern, uh, southernmost shores of the, of the country. So that's just impressive. But on top of the wildlife, on top of the beautiful sceneries that can be, uh, can be observed in South Africa, the Table, table Mountain, just to, to mention one, uh, an incredible and very fascinating aspect of this country is its history, the controversial history of the past uh, century. And its controversial history will be at the center of our third World Cruise event, which will be held on uh, Robben Island, uh, just uh, uh, close to Cape Town, which is the geographical symbol of the walk of South Africa towards democracy. Our guests will have the possibility to visit the prison where Nelson Mandela has been kept. We'll be hearing from uh, locals about the struggle and the difficulties of this long walk towards democracy. And it will really be a fascinating experience in a location which is not normally accessible to private groups or to private organizations. So we're really honored to be able to take our guests to such an experience and we believe that this really uh, meets our vision of travel as a travel, as a deeper experience within the countries that we visit and within their, uh, their history and culture. Of course, at the end of this event, we'll also have a, a fabulous dinner with uh, local specialties and the most acclaimed and the most awarded South African wines. After Cape Town, the voyage continues. In a region of the world which is not so often um, part of the, let's say, cruise line itineraries, and that's probably part of the world to which you wouldn't uh, travel independently because of the remoteness, because of the complexity of this, uh, of this region. But can you imagine what a difference it can make, once again, to do it with uh, the planning, with the uh, reassurance, with the guidance, and with the comfort of Silver Sea? And that's why we've selected along this course some of the most uh, uh, beautiful countries and some of the most interesting destinations to really give you, again, another angle, an even more authentic angle on the African continent. We will start with uh, Qualvis Bay in uh, Namibia. We'll stay here overnight. Namibia is famous, first of all, for its unique desert. It's one of the most unique deserts uh, in the, on the planet, but also for the wildlife, once again, which is slightly different from both the one that you can see in Kenya and the one that you will see in, um, in South Africa. After that, we will be sailing all the way up to Sao Tome, then Lome in uh, Togo, Temma, Accra, which is in, uh, in Ghana. And of course, there will be different aspects here, different experiences to be made. You will learn about the coffee plantation in, um, in Togo. You will learn more about the fascinating at the same time dramatic story of the slave trade in uh, Ghana, which has been to some extent the most affected country in the world for what concerns this, uh, this flag. After that, we will continue up north. We will visit uh, uh, Banjul in Gambia and Dakar, Senegal, just before getting to Morocco. And in Morocco, we will stop in uh, Casablanca. Although it has slightly changed since the time of Humphrey Bogart, it remains one of the most fascinating cities in uh, Northern Africa and uh, in Morocco in, uh, in particular. It's probably the most modern face of uh, 
Morocco, but just because of that, it preserves those contrasts, which makes it so uh, so appealing. By the way, in Morocco, you can also sorry in Casablanca, you can also find um, uh, the third largest mosque in the world, the Mosque Hassan II, which can host up to 25,000 pilgrims, and you can just imagine uh, how beautiful and how massive this construction can be, and it's one of the top attractions in uh, uh, the continent, and we will be visiting during, during this itinerary. After Morocco, we will be sailing all the way up to Lisbon, but before getting to Portugal, we will stop in Seville, and this will not be the usual stop. We will not be uh, sailing to Seville the way other cruise lines would do it, meaning docking the ship in uh, Cadiz on the southern coast, then uh, taking the guests up to Seville with a, with a bus, two hours, two hours and a half by bus, and then all the way back. From the southern coast of uh, Spain, Silver Whisper will enter the Guadalquivir River and will sail along this river till the very heart of Seville and we'll dock in front of one of the main squares of Seville and this is just because of the limited size of our vessels. This is an experience that nobody else could offer you because we only uh, can offer this kind of experience on a ship like uh, Silver Whisper and you can imagine what's an amazing experience for you and for our guests will be to stay there overnight in Seville, one of the most beautiful cities in southern Europe the capital of Andalusia at the beginning of May, of May, just an incredible experience during the European spring. After that, as I said, Lisbon, which is another beautiful European capital, the capital of Portugal, and Lisbon will be the starting point of our last segment, but it's really the case to say last but not least, because there are at least three big highlights in this last part of the, of the world cruise. First of all, Bilbao. Bilbao is a very nice city on the upper coast of, uh, of Spain, and it's also the house of uh, the Guggenheim Museum. The Guggenheim Museum is considered one of the best construction in the world. It's been uh, designed by Frank Gehry, of course, the famous artist star, and it's one of the most important museums in Europe. Well, in the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, we will be hosting the last World Cruise event, we will have a private opening and a private visit of this museum, which will be concluded with uh, an exclusive dinner designed and cooked by a Michelin star chef. So you can imagine what uh, a glorious and what uh, an exclusive event this will be in one of the most beautiful museums in the world. After that, Silver Whisper will move to the French coast, again on the Atlantic coast, and we will be uh, stopping in Bordeaux, and we'll be spending three days in Bordeaux, so two overnights in Bordeaux, plenty of time to uh, explore this city. Bordeaux is a beautiful uh, city, really, France at its best, but also plenty of time. Okay, I hope that the problem has been uh, overcome. My apologies for this uh, quick technical issue. Uh, as I was saying, as I was saying, after our departure from Lisbon, I mentioned the exclusive event that we'll be having in Bilbao, the Guggenheim Museum. Our uh, three nights stay, actually two nights stay, three days stay in uh, in Bordeaux before getting to Saint Malo, so Mont Saint Michel. And after Mont Saint Michel, after Saint Malo, after France, we will finally get to London in the heart of the United Kingdom, and this will conclude our world cruise itinerary. Just to recap, I've already mentioned them along the way, but just to recap, this World Cruise will feature four World Cruise events. World Cruise events, which means exclusive events for our full World Cruisers, complementary events, and limited to, restricted to our uh, World Cruise World Cruise guests. First one in Papeda, Tahiti, a full immersion into the Tahitian culture. The second one in Japan, which is not just in Osaka, but it's actually a three uh, night overland program in the heart, in the inland of Japan, Cape Town with uh, uh, Robben Island in South Africa, and then the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, Spain, as we've just, we've just seen. As you know, each World Cruise features also a comprehensive package of benefits, and this year's package is wider than uh, ever and richer than ever. We'll start with a round-trip business class air from selected gateways 
in the US and in the rest of the world. Uh, bon Voyage Dinner Gala before the departure. We are working on something really special in San Francisco. We'll give you more details in the weeks and in the months to come. Private transfers, of course, $4,000 ship or credit for double occupancy, so basically per, per suite. Four exclusive World Cruise events, which are the ones that I've just mentioned. Silver Sea experiences, which are other surprises and other experiences, both ashore and on board, which we are working on with a, with a team and uh, about which we will tell you once again more details in the weeks to come. The usual commemorative gifts to remember this uh, great experience. And then some more, let's say, practical benefits which can really make a difference once you spend so much time on a ship around the world. The baggage valid between home and ship, so in San Francisco and, uh, and London. The complimentary laundry service, complimentary unlimited Wi-Fi. And then two things which are new compared to the past, the medical services and the visa packets. Uh, this one in particular is quite convenient and quite handy when you visit so many different countries in remote destination in a unique voice, having somebody taking care of that for you, that's a great addition. So this was pretty much it. It was, of course, a very quick overview of this itinerary. We could spend hours going through each and every, uh, and every detail, and we will be happy to do so in the days and in the weeks to come if you wish to, to do so. But as I'm saying here, the tale of tales starts today. Starts today with the announcements that we just made with the uh, guest lecturers that we've just announced and the, the authors that we have announced, but it will continue in the next weeks and months with new events being announced, with new personalities on board and with new authors confirmed for this amazing experience. Back to you, Viviane. Andrea, thank you, Andrea, for this wonderful presentation. I'm sure some of our audience are seriously considering taking part in this tale of tales, and um, others may just have put a work cruise on their bucket list. Um, we have received some questions uh, from today's attendees. First of all, I would like to apologize for our audio issues, but as a reminder, we are still taking questions, so if you have any questions, please, now is the time. Um, use the, the question pane on the control panel. We also would like to remind you that we have on the handout pane of the control panel a downloadable digital version of our brand new World Cruise 19 brochure. Um, it's so new that it hasn't even made to press yet, so you're the first one to actually be um, receiving it in a digital form. And so um, let's get to it. We don't have a lot of time left, but I guess we can go through a few of the questions that we received today. Um, Andrea, we had a few guests asking about um, medical issues. Uh, actually, one in particular, Patrick, was like, what happens if I have a medical issue? And um, you mentioned the complimentary medical service uh, during the presentation. Could you uh, clarify for our attendees what's included on that? Absolutely, with pleasure, and this is actually a very valid point. As we were saying, this year we really tried our best to include this package because we knew that this could be extremely relevant for our, for our guests. So this medical services package for full work cruises will include basically the visits to the medical center, medical services uh, provided by our onboard doctors, which normally are charged with an extra fee, in this case will be complimentary, any medical test, test administered uh, on board, and any medication that the onboard doctor will prescribe to our guests for any kind of, um, for any kind of program, problem that they might uh, uh, incur in. Of course, this package we will, not, uh, um, will not include refills of prescription drugs which have uh, been prescribed prescribed before the, the cruise or the cost of transferring a guest to a land-based facility for treatment or any kind of medical evacuation rather than uh, uh, treatments which are delivered outside of the ship. Of course, these things are not uh, included, but anything else is included, and we believe that that's a great added value for our full world cruise guests. Thank you, Andrea. We also got a question that just came in about the visa packages. Um, 
Could you um, explain a little bit that too? Yeah, absolutely. As I was saying before, CRC will take care of requesting the visa for the countries where this is uh, necessary and will also pay advance the, the fee of all these uh, visa. Actually, not advance because this visa will be part of the uh, of the cruise uh, of the cruise fare. The only um, the only thing that you need to be aware of is that there's some paperwork involved in uh, obtaining these visas. You can imagine, particularly in some remote destinations. So guests will be asked to provide the necessary documentation approximately 30 uh, days before departure. But these are all information that our reservation team and your travel agents will uh, uh, provide at ahead of time so you don't have to worry about that. Um, great, Andrea. Um, um, there's also uh, actually a question here about um, the captain and the cruise director for this world cruise. Are those already uh, confirmed? No, we have not confirmed that yet. Of course, we will make a, a public announcement as soon as they are confirmed. As you can imagine, we are still kind of uh, uh, a bit away, far away from uh, departure date, but we'll be doing that in the months to come. All right, and the last one, because we are running out of time, um, you've talked about short events um, uh, being planned for this World Cruise, and someone was asking if there's any other events beyond what you have announced today. I think you already covered that, but maybe just reinforce it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. As I was mentioning, there are four exclusive uh, World Cruise events, which are limited to our uh, full World Cruises, and the ones in uh, uh, Papete, Osaka with a three-night overland program, Cape Town, Robben Island, and the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao. On top of that, we are working on other uh, experiences and surprises which will take place both on board the ship and ashore. Nothing is uh, confirmed at this stage, but it will be announced in the weeks to come, and uh, believe me, there will be very interesting surprises, including, by the way, the uh, gala uh, dinner just before departure in San Francisco.